this is perhaps the greatest event in Jewish life for thousands of years, and it's a miracle that it took place. While these claims could be deemed suffacic or even brushed off, there's more to this wealthy family. So today, I will delve into the astonishing claim made by Lord Rothschild, the head of the powerful Rothschild family, that his family played a pivotal role in the creation of the country of Israel. For the adrenaline rush, I will explore the backroom deals, betrayal, and a war that has lasted almost a hundred years. As such, in the end, we will be able to tell facts from fiction and learn about the areas where our cognitive biases seem to take a toll. Balfour Declaration and Zionist Movement The Balfour Declaration, also known as Balfour's Promise in Arabic, was a public pledge made by Britain in 1917 during World War I. It declared Britain's aim to establish a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. To understand the significance of this declaration, we must first explore the context in which it was made. During World War I, Britain and its allies fiercely struggled against the Central Powers, including Germany, Austria, Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. As the war dragged on, Britain sought to gain support from various groups, including the Jewish population, both within its borders and in other countries. At the same time, the Zionist movement, which advocated for establishing a Jewish homeland, was gaining momentum. Led by figures like Chaim Weizmann, a Russian Jew who had settled in Manchester, England, the Zionist movement found support among influential leaders in Britain, including Prime Minister David Lloyd George. Britain saw an opportunity to rally Jewish support in neutral countries, particularly in the United States and Russia, where the anti-Semitic Tsarist government had just been overthrown. By publicly endorsing Zionism, Britain hoped to gain the backing of Jewish communities and encourage their governments to stay in the war until victory. Furthermore, Britain had strategic interests in the region. Palestine, situated between the crucial territories of India and Egypt, held significant importance for British imperial ambitions. That way, establishing a Zionist state in Palestine would not only align with the Allied aim of self-determination for smaller nations, but also secure British dominance in the region. However, the issuance of the Balfour Declaration was not without controversy. The Declaration promised Jews a land where the native population, predominantly Arab, made up more than 90% of the population. This disregard for the presence and wishes of the indigenous population would have profound implications for the future of Palestine. Moreover, the Balfour Declaration conflicted with previous promises made by the British in the 1915 Hussein McMahon correspondence, Britain had already pledged Arab independence from the Ottoman Empire. Additionally, the 1916 Sykes-Picot Agreement between Britain and France envisioned the international administration of Palestine, with most of the region under French influence. Despite these conflicting promises, the Balfour Declaration meant that Palestine would come under British occupation, denying the Palestinian Arabs the independence they had been led to expect. The Declaration introduced the notion of a national home for the Jewish people, a vague term that left the meaning open to interpretation. But what about the Zionists? movement, you ask? Well, there's more than meets the eye. However, to truly understand the roots of Zionism, we must travel back to the ancient Israelite kingdoms of Israel and Judah. These kingdoms, nestled in the heart of the region we now know as Palestine, were the birthplace of a vibrant civilization. The Jewish people have a long and storied history in this land with periods of triumph and tragedy. But one theme has remained constant throughout their journey, the longing for Zion, the desire to return to their ancestral homeland. This deep-seated longing for Zion can be traced back to biblical times. The Hebrew Bible, or Tanakh, references the land of Israel as the promised land for the Jewish people. It tells tales of exiles, conquests, and eventual returns to Zion. For centuries, the Jewish people held on to the belief that one day they would return to their beloved homeland. This belief became an integral part of their identity, even during times of exile and diaspora. Fast forward to the 19th century, a time when Europe was grappling with rising anti-Semitism. Jewish communities faced discrimination, persecution, and even violent pogroms. During this tumultuous period, the Zionist movement began to take shape. The Zionist movement emerged as a response to the growing anti-Semitism and the desire to put an end to Jewish persecution. European Jews, inspired by their historical connection to the land of Israel, yearned for a homeland where they could live free from discrimination and persecution. The movement gained momentum and support, particularly among European Jews seeking solutions to the challenges they faced in their respective countries. One of the key figures who spearheaded this movement was Theodor Herzl, a journalist and writer often referred to as the father of modern political Zionism. Herzl's seminal work, The Jewish State, published in 1896, laid out his vision for establishing a Jewish homeland. He argued that the only way to ensure the safety and well-being of the Jewish people was through the creation of a sovereign state. Herzl's ideas resonated with many Jews seeking a solution to the challenges they faced in their respective countries. The Zionist movement gained popularity, particularly among European 
Judean Jews who saw it as a way to secure their future and preserve their cultural and religious heritage. Pre-Zionist initiatives such as the migration of Jews to the land of Israel due to religious persecution in Europe laid the groundwork for the establishment of the Zionist movement. These early pioneers, known as the First Aliyah, faced numerous challenges as they sought to build a new life in Palestine. The Zionist movement, with its call for a return to Zion, struck a chord with Jews around the world. It gave them hope and a sense of purpose as they worked towards realizing their long-held dream, a homeland of their own. But the path to achieving this dream was not without obstacles. The Zionist movement faced opposition from various quarters, including Arab nationalists who saw the establishment of a Jewish homeland as a threat to their aspirations for self-determination. Despite these challenges, the Zionist movement continued to gain support and momentum. It received a significant boost in 1917 with the issuance of the Balfour Declaration by the British government, which expressed support for establishing a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The Balfour Declaration, coupled with the subsequent mandate for Palestine granted to Britain by the League of Nations, provided a legal framework for establishing a Jewish homeland. However, it also set the stage for a conflict that would shape the region for decades to come. The rise of Nazism and the horrors of the Holocaust further fueled support for the Zionist project. The world witnessed the devastating impact of anti-Semitism and the need for a safe haven for the Jewish people became even more apparent. The post-World War II period brought new challenges and opportunities for the Zionist movement. The United Nations proposed a partition plan in 1947 which aimed to divide Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states. This plan was met with mixed reactions with both support and opposition from various quarters. The subsequent 1947 to 1949 Palestine War, which followed the declaration of the State of Israel in 1948, marked a turning point in the history of Zionism. It was a period of intense conflict and displacement, with both Jews and Arabs paying a heavy price. With the wages of the Palestinian War rising, there was a wealthy family that was pushing for a few revolts behind the scenes. This family is none other than the Rothschild family. They have over the decades made severe claims that they created Israel. But how true could this be? On paper it looks easy, however unbeknownst to you and me, the Rothschild Rothschild family can't be underestimated. As such, let me walk you through some catchy yet punchy details that might prove whether they created Israel or not. To understand the incredible influence of the Rothschild family, we must first explore their rise to power. It all began in the 18th century with Meyer Amschel Rothschild, a man who believed that money equaled power. Born into a middle-income family in the ghettos of Frankfurt, Meyer had a burning desire to go from rags to riches. As a young man, Meyer embarked on a money-lending business, starting with a small amount and gradually growing his capital. But money lending came with challenges, as people often failed to repay their debts. Mayer, however, was not one to be trifled with. He did whatever was necessary to ensure his loans were paid back with interest, earning a reputation as someone not to be crossed. Meyer's financial skills caught the attention of the German royal family, and he soon became their banker. This marked a turning point for Meyer and his family. He understood that success was about managing money and manipulating people and situations to his advantage. Mayer imparted his financial knowledge to his five sons. Amschel, Solomon, Nathan, Carl, and Jacob. He taught them the importance of controlling not only money but also the flow of money. Meyer's grand plan was to dominate the banking sector in different parts of Europe, believing that whoever controlled the money held all the power. And so the Rothschild brothers spread their banking business to cities like London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples. They applied their father's shrewd tactics and it worked. The Rothschilds created the world's first international bank, establishing a blueprint for how banks open international branches today. But their influence didn't stop there. The Rothschilds also revolutionized the concept of using government bonds to raise money for the government. As their wealth and power grew, they became more influential than entire governments. When countries wanted to establish central banks, they turned to the Rothschilds for guidance and assistance. The Rothschilds played a pivotal role in creating central banks in many countries, including the Bank of England and the Bank of France. Their expertise and financial prowess were unparalleled, and they became the go-to advisors for finance and banking matters. The next time you walk into a bank, remember to thank the Rothschilds. Their legacy in the banking industry is undeniable, shaping how we perceive and interact with money today. But for every good thing they did, the Rothschilds also engaged in equally brutal activities. However, one of the most shocking instances of their manipulation came during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. In the 1800s, Napoleon was on a mission to conquer the world. He was a military genius, capable of outthinking, outwitting, and outsmarting anyone on the battlefield. His ambition knew no bounds. While the world fought against Napoleon, the Rothschilds saw an opportunity to play both sides. They understood that war was expensive and the British government needed money to pay soldiers and buy weapons. The Rothschilds took advantage of this situation and offered quick loans to the British government, but many didn't know that the Rothschilds
Rothschilds also offered loans to Napoleon. By supplying both sides with money, the Rothschilds ensured that no matter who won the war, they would be on the winning side. Whoever emerged victorious would also owe the Rothschilds millions of pounds, solidifying their position as Europe's most powerful banking family. Contrary to their expectations, their strategy had a fatal flaw. By giving money to both sides, they were indirectly prolonging the war. Each day, hundreds of soldiers were slaughtered on the battlefields, all while the Rothschilds funded the war. It was a diabolical move that showcased their ruthless pursuit of wealth and power. Eventually, the war ended with Napoleon's defeat at the Battle of Waterloo. The British coalition forces emerged victorious and owed the Rothschilds a significant amount of money. The Rothschilds celebrated their triumph, but they had one more card to play, a move that would increase their wealth a hundredfold in just 24 hours. They manipulated the stock market by spreading fake news about the battle's outcome. Knowing that the value of the pound sterling would be affected by the news, Nathan Rothschild paid a spy to wait on the battlefield and send a pigeon with the information. The spy reported that the British had won, and Nathan used this knowledge to his advantage. Instead of celebrating Britain's victory, Nathan ordered his agents to spread fake news that Napoleon had won. This caused panic selling of British bonds on the stock exchange, driving down the price of the pound sterling. The Rothschilds then swooped in and bought all the bonds at rock-bottom prices. 24 hours later, when the official news arrived that the British had won, it was too late. The value of the pound sterling shot up, and the Rothschilds had made an astronomical profit. According to reports, they made the equivalent of $6 billion in today's currency due to that single move. This cunning manipulation of the stock market solidified the Rothschilds' position as the world's wealthiest and most influential family. Their wealth surpassed anything the world had ever seen, and they were just getting started. And surprisingly, Israel was on their list as the next big thing. Lord Rothschild Allegation Decades after the establishment of Israel, Lord Rothschild, a descendant of the Rothschild family banking, made some allegations that his family created Israel. Partly this could be true despite the intense debate and speculation his allegations have sparked. It is because a letter was addressed to Lord Rothschild at the beginning of the 20th century and at the height of the Zionist movement that later changed the course of history. The Foreign Office addressed the letter to Lord Rothschild on the 2nd of November 1917. It read in part, Dear Lord Rothschild, I have so much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's Government the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. It further read, His Majesty's Government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. Lastly, the read ended with this statement. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. With this letter in place, there are just so many questions that seem to spring up. However, to understand the claim made by Lord Rothschild regarding his family's involvement in the creation of Israel, it is essential to explore the historical context of the Zionist movement, since it was stated in parts of the letter and the events leading up to the issuance of the Balfour Declaration. Now pay attention. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Jewish nationalism, known as Zionism, gained momentum as a response to rising anti-Semitism and the desire for a homeland for the Jewish people. Influential figures like Theodor Herzl played a significant role in advocating for the establishment of a Jewish homeland. The Zionist movement aimed to address the long-standing issue of Jewish persecution and discrimination, particularly in Europe. The idea of a Jewish homeland resonated with Jews worldwide, who sought a place where they could live free from persecution and practice their religion without fear. Palestine, under Ottoman rule at the time, emerged as a potential location for establishing a Jewish homeland due to its historical and religious significance. Jewish communities began to form in cities like Jaffa and Jerusalem despite challenges from the Ottoman Empire and concerns from the Arab population. The outbreak of World War I in 1914 brought significant changes to the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East. The British, led by Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour, saw an opportunity to advance their regional interests. The Balfour Declaration, issued in 1917, expressed the British government's support for establishing a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. The Balfour Declaration had profound implications, boosting the Zionist movement and marking a major world power's first official recognition of the Jewish people's right to a national home. However, it also sparked controversy, as critics argued that it disregarded the rights and aspirations of the Arab population in Palestine. If you can, recall in the earlier parts of this video, I stated that the Rothschild Family Bank was the sole financier of the British government and military, so it shouldn't be a surprise for the British government to be at the forefront
forefront of pushing for the establishment of Israel. Remember, there was nothing the Rothschild family bank was incapable of doing. They were ubiquitous. While Lord Rothschild's connection to the Balfour Declaration adds intrigue to the story, it is essential to recognize that the establishment of Israel resulted from various factors and actors. The Balfour Declaration remains a controversial document, with critics arguing that it disregarded the rights of the Arab population in Palestine. In the end, the claim made by Lord Rothschild serves as a stark reminder of the complex history and ongoing conflicts surrounding the creation of Israel. It is a topic that continues to be debated and analyzed, shaping our understanding of the Middle East and its geopolitical dynamics. And yet again, what do we know about the Rothschild family? Or what is their influence in the geopolitical landscape besides Israel and the Middle East? Or what is their legacy and impact on international finance? With all honesty, whoever runs the money also possesses the power. In other words, money is power and power is money. And so the Rothschild's family roots run too deep. But why don't we take an archaeological expedition to flesh out the background of this very family? Background of the Rothschild family. The Rothschild family, the most famous European banking dynasty, has left an indelible mark on Europe's economic and political history for over two centuries. Founded by Meyer Amschel Rothschild and his five sons, Amschel Meyer, Salomon Meyer, Nathan Meyer, Karl Meyer, and Jakob Meyer, the family's origins can be traced back to Frankfurt, Germany. From humble beginnings, Meyer Amschel Rothschild's vision and ambition propelled his family to become international bankers, establishing branches in London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples. The Rothschild's influence extended beyond banking and finance, encompassing mining, energy, real estate, and winemaking. However, their immense wealth and power have also made them the subject of various conspiracy theories, fueling sensational speculation about their control over world events. For instance, the creation of Israel. Despite the unfounded claims, the Rothschild's remarkable success can be attributed to their ability to adapt to the changing times, participate in the Industrial Revolution, and seize opportunities for economic growth throughout Europe. In addition to their financial prowess, the Rothschilds were known for their considerable charitable activities, particularly in the arts and education. As such, this introduction sets the stage for a captivating exploration of the shocking and sensational history of the Rothschild family. So, here's the their family history as it all took traction. In the bustling city of Frankfurt, Germany in the 18th century, a man named Meyer Amschel Rothschild laid the foundation for the most influential banking dynasty in Europe. Born on February 23, 1744, Meyer Amschel Rothschild came from humble beginnings, but his ambition and keen business sense would shape his family's and the world's future. Meyer Amschel Rothschild's family name derived from the Red Shield Rot on the house in the ghetto where his ancestors had once lived. Although he initially intended to become a rabbi, the early death of his parents forced him into an apprenticeship in a banking house. During this time, Meyer learned the intricacies of finance and developed a keen understanding of the banking industry. Meyer's big break came when he became the court factor to William IX, the landgrave of Hesse Castle. This position allowed Meyer to do business with reigning houses, a strategy he would later pass down to his sons. Meyer also had a unique approach to family planning. He aimed to father as many sons as possible who could handle the family's business affairs abroad. This strategy would proved to be instrumental in the success of the Rothschild dynasty. With his newfound connections and knowledge of the banking industry, Meyer Amschel Rothschild set out to establish his own banking business. In 1769, he opened a small banking house in Frankfurt, which would be the launching pad for his family's future success. Meyer's reputation for honesty, reliability, and shrewdness quickly spread, attracting clients from all walks of life. As Meyer's banking business grew, he realized the importance of expanding his reach beyond Frankfurt. He understood that to establish a dynasty truly, he needed to establish branches in key financial centers across Europe. With this vision in mind, Meyer sent his sons to various cities to set up their banking operations. The first son, Amschel Meyer, remained in Frankfurt to oversee the family's business. Amschel proved to be a capable and astute banker, following in his father's footsteps and upholding the family's reputation for excellence. Nathan Meyer, the second son, was sent to London in 1804. London was a thriving financial hub, and Nathan saw the potential for immense growth and opportunity. With his sharp business acumen, Nathan quickly established himself as a prominent figure in the London banking scene. He formed strong relationships with influential individuals and institutions, positioning the Rothschilds as critical players in international finance. Meanwhile, Jacob Meyer, also known as James, was sent to Paris in 1811. Paris was a city known for its sophistication and cultural influence, and Jacob saw the potential for the Rothschilds to make a significant impact. With his charm and business acumen, Jacob quickly gained 
gained the trust and respect of the French elite. He became a trusted advisor to influential figures, solidifying the Rothschild's position in French society. Salomon Meyer and Karl Meyer, the fourth and fifth sons, were sent to Vienna and Naples, respectively, in the 1820s. These cities were centers of political and economic power, and the Rothschild saw the potential for growth and influence. Salomon and Karl established themselves as prominent bankers in their respective cities, expanding the family's reach and impact across Europe. The Rothschild's international banking network allowed them to navigate the complex financial landscape of the time. They facilitated loans to warring princes during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, profiting from the chaos and instability. Their ability to provide financial services to both sides of the conflict earned them immense wealth and influence. Peace brought new opportunities for the Rothschilds. They adapted to the changing times, transitioning from dealers in luxury items and traders in coins and commercial papers to agents in government securities, insurance company stocks and shares of industrial companies. They invested in railways, coal, ironworking and metallurgy, participating in the Industrial Revolution and contributing to economic growth throughout Europe. By the mid-19th century, the Rothschilds had achieved an essential position in the world trade of oil and non-ferrous metals. Their influence extended beyond banking and finance, encompassing mining, energy, real estate and winemaking. The Rothschilds became synonymous with wealth, power and influence, evoking admiration and envy. They were conducting all transactions jointly and never aiming for excessive profits. These principles helped them navigate the risks inherent in passing down a business to future generations, ensuring the continuity and longevity of the Rothschild dynasty. But how did they influence the world of finance this so much, you ask? Well, let me paint you with the details of how Maya Amschel, the brainchild of modern international finance, started. And little did he know that whatever his principles and methodologies were, he could later enormously impact international finance as most organizations and institutions relied on those very strategies as their bedrocks. Maya Amschel learned the ropes of business at a young age. His father, Amschel Moses Rothschild, was involved in the silk cloth trade and currency exchange. Change. Meyer's first job was sorting coins acquired through Frankfurt's semi-annual trade fairs, which attracted buyers and sellers from all over the region. This early exposure to commerce and finance laid the foundation for his future success. Tragedy struck when Meyer Amschel was just 12 years old. His parents died of smallpox, leaving him in the care of relatives. During this time, Meyer's path in life took a significant turn. He was sent to Hanover to apprentice with Simon Wolf Oppenheimer, prominent Jewish banking house. Meyer was exposed to foreign trade and finance in Hanover, gaining valuable knowledge about rare coins from ancient Rome, Persia, and the Byzantine Empire. Wealthy collectors highly sought after these coins, and Maya learned how to transact with nobility, earning the title of court Jew or court factor. At the age of 19, Maya Amschel returned to Frankfurt and joined his brothers in the family trading business. Their father had started the company, and Maya's expertise in rare coins quickly became an asset. His reputation grew, and he caught the attention of Crown Prince Wilhelm of Hesse, who had previously purchased coins from Maya's father. This connection proved to be a turning point in Maya's career. Crown Prince Wilhelm, who later assumed the title Wilhelm IX, Landgrave of Hesse Castle, became Meyer's patron and provided valuable business opportunities. The relationship centered around coin trading soon expanded to include other financial services. Meyer's ties with the nobility grew more robust and he began to establish himself as a trusted financial advisor. In 1769, Meyer Amschel approached Crown Prince Wilhelm with a request for the title of court factor or crown agent. This honorary title signified that Meyer had performed services for royalty and allowed him to display the Hesse and Hanau coat of arms on his house, effectively advertising his connection to the nobility. This recognition further enhanced Meyer's reputation and opened doors to new business ventures. Notably, one of the critical factors that set the Rothschilds apart was their ability to navigate international markets. They established branches in major European financial centers, including London, Paris, Vienna and Naples. This extensive network allowed them to capitalize on emerging opportunities and establish themselves as the go-to bankers for governments, nobility, and even royalty. The Rothschilds were pioneers in international finance, introducing innovative financial instruments and practices that revolutionized the industry. They were instrumental in developing government bonds, which provided a stable source of income for governments and allowed them to fund their operations. Additionally, the Rothschilds played a crucial role in establishing the modern banking system, emphasizing centralized control and efficient communication between branches. Their influence extended beyond the realm of banking. The Rothschilds 
Lords were known for their intelligent investments in industries such as railways, mining and infrastructure development. Their strategic investments generated substantial profits and contributed to the economic growth of the countries in which they operated. However, the family's success was not without controversy. Critics accused them of manipulating markets, controlling governments and even orchestrating wars for their gain. These allegations, fueled by anti-Semitic sentiments, often overshadowed the family's genuine contributions to the world of finance. Despite the controversies, the Rothschilds continued expanding their influence, establishing banks, financing infrastructure projects and investing in European industries. Their wealth was unparalleled and their power was felt in every corner of the continent. Most importantly, the rise of the Rothschilds as international bankers was a testament to their ambition, adaptability and financial acumen. Their ability to seize opportunities and navigate the ever-changing economic landscape allowed them to establish themselves as one of the most influential families in Europe. In addition to their financial endeavors, the Rothschilds were known for their considerable charitable activities, particularly in the arts and education, leaving a lasting impact on society. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out our other awesome videos on the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.